Hello everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. This week I am going to be continuing on with my 18th century pastoral project. I'm very, very excited about it. So since the last video, the thing that I did was I finished stitching down all of the bias tape all along the closures here, the like front opening, neckline, etc. And I actually also started putting on slash marking for hooks on this area here. So I've only actually sewn one of the hooks on so far. I have all of the hooks marked on this side. I need to mark them on the other side. And I have been doing these at rehearsal because it's really easy to just do a little hand sewing, sew on some hooks there. So I'm probably going to continue sewing more of those on tonight. But in the meantime, I am also starting to pleat up the fabric for the skirts on here. So I have marked a little mark right here, right, uh, I don't know, what is that, like four or five inches from the point, and that is where the skirts are going to go to in the center. So they're not going to go all the way to the center, they're going to go to about like here-ish. That's pretty common for a lot of 18th century stuff of like how stuff is attached. So that's where they're going to wind up getting pleated to. It's 16 inches on each side overall is like the total pleat distance. So I'm pleating that up with knife pleats right now. I'm just eyeballing it. We'll see if it winds up being 16 inches. If not, I'll adjust it. That's just kind of how I do pleats. And then the other thing that I wanted to show you, it's kind of like a partial thing so far because I ordered three trim options off of Amazon. One of them has arrived so far. The other two are set to arrive tomorrow. But I do actually really like this one. So I think we've got a good contender. This is the trim option. I'll link it down below, but basically it is an embroidered flower trim. So hopefully you can see the details in those embroidered flowers. They're really, really quite cute. And it's a really nice color match, like as far as the greens in the leaves go. And the pink is really cute. And the pink actually winds up matching that ribbon that I talked about in the last video that was like the only hot pink, but really not hot pink ribbon that they had at Joann's that I could use for the stomach relacing. So it's a good sign. And I do feel like because this has multiple pinks, it might help to blend with the pink silk fabric that I wanted to use for trimmings as well. So that might work. Um, that said, of course, I'm not going to actually sew this on until the other two options get here on Thursday, but it's something that will almost certainly be sewn on this week. So that's where I'm at right now. I'm going to continue pleating up the skirts and then those are going to get attached in, at least what I'm planning on doing, the exact same method that I did with Felicity, most likely by hand doing, I think I did, did I do a prick stitch or a running back stitch? I did one of those to attach it on there and then the pleats kind of wind up going into the bodice. With this one, I will probably fold them down because I kind of want that extra oomph behind like where it comes down in the back as the point. So I'll probably fold the pleats back down instead of sewing them like right at the waist at the top. But basically because this comes down in a point, the pleats wind up being like flat across. Like you don't shape them with how you connect them, if that makes sense, because it is flat on the fabric. So yeah, I'm gonna continue working on that and I will touch base with you probably while I'm attaching them to the bodice. So I just wanted to take a moment to apologize because I have been really, really bad about filming this week. To be fair, I've also been really bad about sewing. It is now Saturday night and I have done very, very little sewing. So I wanna show you what I did do. I have done this sort of thing in other videos, so that's why I didn't show you like at all, but I did pleat the petticoat. No, I have not yet finished the pleating of the overskirt to the bodice, but this petticoat is made of one front panel and two back panels, and they close just about evenly, like over the hip right here, just about the same length here. Let's see, side by side. Okay, that's not true. The front is about uh, an inch shorter on each side, if you look at it here, but uh, the back is really, really fully pleated. I did all of these pleats just eyeballing, so you can see the pleats here. This is the back, and they wind up coming into a box pleat in the center back here, but otherwise they are knife pleats that go in 
towards the center back and then the front is has one large box pleat in the center and then pleats go outwards to the sides. That's just how I like to do 18th century skirts. I really don't know if that is like 100% historically accurate, but that is how I do my 18th century petticoats. And you can see my very not historically accurate method of using bias tape for the ties and doing a zigzag stitch on the machine to put those pleats in place within the bias tape. So you can see also that is what it looks like from the inside. So yeah, that's how I do petticoats. So this petticoat, it is not done. It needs a hem still. And this is going to have the lightweight wall on the bottom around the hem of the petticoat. I can't remember if I showed you the wall or not, but this is what it looks like. It is really light and airy. It's a cotton poly blend. It's just from Joann's. Uh, this has a weird cut out from it because that was what I used for the stomacher. So I don't remember if I showed you the yardage. I know I did show you the stomacher obviously, but yeah, that's what that looks like. So I am going to put this aside for now because I'm going to need to hem this and figure out the hem before I can put on the wall ruffle around the bottom, but the ruffle will be applied to the petticoat. The other kind of update is that I did get the two other trims from Amazon, except that one of them was literally the exact same trim that I got that I already showed you, and it was more expensive for half the yardage, so that got returned. The other one was like individually done little ribbon rosettes. They were not done very well, and the green was a very spring green that completely clashed with the green that I have in the dress. So both of those got returned, and I am going to be using this one right here that I showed you earlier. So I am going to hand stitch this because I've already put hooks on the bodice. I have to hand stitch it. I otherwise probably could have machined it, but yeah, it's gonna get hand stitched to the bodice opening here. I don't know if I'm gonna use it anywhere else. I have 10 yards so I can play with it. I, you know, maybe I'll use it for like the pickups of the skirt instead of ribbon, that might be fun we'll see but yeah this is going to be added to my like hand sewing to do at rehearsal and that's kind of why I've had no time to sew this week is not only have I had work for four days because I work Monday through Thursday so like four days a week and they are full work days each day and then just a few hours later I go to rehearsal and in fact I have rehearsal tomorrow too so I don't know how much I'm gonna get done tomorrow but I do hope to show you a little bit more work this week that's my goal I am at least going to keep working on pleating the skirt to the bodice and hopefully get that attached today but at rehearsal I have been sewing on the hooks on the bodice closure and I will also wind up sewing this on as soon as I finish all of the hooks. I'm not done with all the hooks. I haven't even finished one side because this is a very like ensemble heavy show and you wind up being on stage a lot. So I don't have a lot of like off stage time to just kind of linger. That's also why I've been called for like every rehearsal, but rehearsals are going well. Definitely looking forward to the show coming together even more as we start to like run the acts. And also this week has been my birthday. So that's been the added busyness. Yesterday we had a nice little game night for my birthday. And today we actually had an American Girl doll picnic. I'll pop up a couple pictures here, but it was so much fun to do this American Girl cosplay picnic. I can't wait to do another one. If you're in the Seattle area and you're interested in attending one, I definitely plan to have one in the summer as well, if not two in the summer. So it was so fun and just a great like bookend to my birthday week here. So anyway, I am going to get back to work now and I am going to work on pleating the green overskirt to the bodice yet again or some more since I have like five pleats done. Oh, and actually before I forget and before I go pleat those, I do want to just take a quick moment since I was just talking about my birthday to thank two very special people, two of you who sent me some things. I know technically they weren't for my birthday, but they arrived the day before my birthday. And so I opened them on my birthday. So I just really, really thank you so much to Hillary for sending me wool for Rose's coat. Oh my gosh, I was fully expecting to buy this from her and then she gifted it to me. Thank you, Hillary. This is like freaking amazing. I am so excited to be able to make the coat that is happening this year, I promise. And I mean, look at this pink wool. Oh my gosh, I just love it so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And likewise, 
a humongous thank you to Sally Ann because I knew that Sally Ann was planning on sending me this gorgeous book that I did not realize how gorgeous it is even, but it's a vintage book. It's from the 1940s and it has these amazing color photographs in it too. It goes like era by era through the Victorian era talking about all of the fashions. It is just absolutely a beautiful book. So that was expected but not like I didn't realize how beautiful it was. But then Sally Ann, she also sent me these gorgeous vintage collars. Look. Oh this one's my favorite. I just love all of the points on that. Oh my gosh. So so pretty. And then this one too. Oh, I'm so excited to incorporate them into a costume. They are so beautiful. Sally Ann, thank you so much. And Hillary, thank you so much, both of you. Those were like amazing surprises on my birthday and that just absolutely made my day, so thank you. And also thank you all to the wonderful birthday wishes that you were all giving me, like since my Q&A video and just in comments and everything like that, you guys really made my birthday feel so, so special. So as seems to be the theme here, I am again procrastinating the pleating of the overskirt and I am instead looking at the stomacher. So I don't know why I decided to do this now, I just kind of wanted to get it out of the way. So the first thing that I did was I went and I put this trim up here on the edge to cover the fact that the fabric was a little short. I am trying to debate if I want to add ribbon through this beading lace or if I want to just leave it as is and also if I want to add another set of lace behind this that maybe is a little taller and a little bit more gathered to better match the portrait for my inspiration but I'm liking that at least so far and then I took my ribbon and I started laying out my ribbon and at first I was kind of thinking okay this is going to be an even gap all the way down but as I did that which was a two and a half inch gap I realized by the time I got down to about here that it was actually like two wide wide for the narrowness of the stomacher. So then I switched to a two inch gap for these two and this one I didn't even measure. I just eyeballed it and it looked right. So this is all pinned in place right here. I am going to just machine stitch over each of these edges here and then I'm going to measure out probably the centers to make sure that they're good. Honestly they look pretty good right now so I might put a pin in them but I think I do want to put like some sort of little jewel type thing in each intersection. I don't know if that's something I have currently so I have to go through my stash and see if there's something there but once these ribbon bits are all in place then I can start putting the bars on here so that I can connect it to the stomacher. I also just remembered that I actually don't have to put hooks and bars on both sides so Thankfully, so far on the actual gown, I've been putting the hooks just on one side. And so I will make that the closure side. The other side is going to be stitched in place. All right, I was looking through my stash and I have some really pretty awesome options for intersections. There's four different options. So one of the options are these flowers here, which have a little rhinestone in the middle, like little plastic pearls around the rhinestone. I think they're really cute. Just little white silk flowers or fake fabric flowers anyway. I think that's very cute, very whimsical. This top one, by the way, will likely have a bow over it, but I haven't made the bow yet. So not 100% on that, but yeah, that's really cute. And then these are just like, gold backed rhinestone buttons. They're very large and very sparkly. But I almost wonder if they are kind of too like large for a solitary item. Maybe just a little bit too much there. So I do have a few other options. Actually I have five options come to think of it. Because one of the other options are these which are vintage. I don't know if that means they're paste or not. But like the hard part with, with this is that I don't really want to take them off of the card unless I definitely want to use them, but it's really hard to see how they'd look on this card. So I'm torn, but I kind of like that they're a little bit smaller, but like so sparkly. And I love that they're vintage. And now the six will only work if A, this one isn't actually seen because of the overlap, which I'm not really sure, and or B, this one is for sure a bow because there are actually seven intersections in all. And that's true for these as well, because I have six of these also. And then another option would be these, which are just kind of like silver plastic with the little rhinestone in them. And I like that the rhinestone is a little smaller, but then like set off. I think that looks really nice. So I don't know, I just kind of like that one too. 
And then the final option is actually this sort of like filigree one here, which is not actually sparkly, but catches the light so well that it seems sparkly. I don't know if you can kind of see that on screen because I feel like it is not standing upright, but you can kind of see the shine on there because it does catch the light very well. So that's another option. By the time you're watching this, I most likely will have chosen, but maybe not, because this will probably be a little bit down the road. I don't think I'll actually sew these on this week. So, and let me know what you think of which one is your favorite between the flowers, this little filigree one, the one with the smaller rhinestone, the larger solitary rhinestone, or these vintage rhinestones right here. So I just wanted to point out really quickly that yes, we have the skirt pleated, and yes, I eyeballed these pleats, and yes, they somehow wound up the exact same length. I don't know how that happened. Like, I was definitely expecting to have to squidge things around, but wow. I wound up just basically doing a standard pleat where it's like you go back and forth and it doesn't overlap, and that wound up being the right amount for what I needed. So now that the skirt is all pleated up, basically what I'm going to wind up doing is this, where I am laying the bodice on top of the skirt, matching up the edges and over over here. So here and also a bit here will wind up dipping down because the highest part of the waist, you're looking at the bottom of the down, but the highest part of the waist is right here. So this winds up having like about a half inch seam allowance here, about a half inch overlap, I guess I should say, because it's really not a seam allowance. Like we're putting the right side here with the wrong side here, and then we're going to top stitch here. Now I was originally thinking of doing this by hand like I did with Felicity, but honestly, I could just do this by machine. It's not gonna matter if the top stitching is machine done instead of hand done. Like it's not gonna look that different in my opinion. So I'm gonna do that by machine because I'm doing a lot of hand sewing right now with sticking the trim on and all of the hooks and bars and everything on the front. And there's gonna be more of that later as well. So yeah, I'm just gonna line this all up, making sure everything matches. This winds up going pretty darn deep down because the point is pretty extreme here in the center back. So kind of just to prepare you. In fact, I think that I barely pinned far enough down. You can see that that is like probably what five inches and honestly I probably could have gone about six inches and still been just fine but I'm gonna pin that all in place and stitch it and then the skirt will be attached to the bodice. I am really glad that I went with the machine sewing because I feel like you can hardly see that stitching at all. I mean even if I get so close it really, really blends in super well with this fabric. So glad I did the machine stitching. That saved me a lot of trouble. But yeah, all of that is stitched in. And then what I mentioned before is, unlike Felicity, what I'm planning to do with this is I am actually going to now press these downwards. So this is the excess skirt that like stuck up past the point. So it goes up to about here. And with Felicity, I whip stitched that all in from the interior. You didn't see it on the outside at all. But but with this, because of the understructure skirt shape, this will actually help to add like just a little bit of oomph. Plus also with the machine stitching, I'm less worried about like the stitching coming out. So that is going to now get pressed down, give a little oomph underneath, and then the skirts are attached to the bodice. I put the dress on to the dress from inside out just so you can kind of see what that looks like from the inside. So that's what it looks like with the skirts all kind of press down. I undid this seam right here. So this had been sewn together like that, but there just isn't enough room to like make that go down unless you pick out that seam. So I picked it out not all the way to here. I think I left, I don't know, like a half an inch or so to the point. But yeah, now everything is laying nicely on the inside. Let me show you what that looks like from the outside. And that is what that nice deep point looks like from the outside with all of the stitching all done see really the texture of the fabric. I feel like it doesn't read as green on camera. It is much, much more green. It's like kind of a mix between a sage and a spring green. I think you're seeing very green gray here. At least that's what I'm seeing in the display. But yeah, it is much more springy green. And the other thing that I was working on quite a bit today was stitching the trim down. I started this while I was at rehearsals because I finished the hooks. So stitching the trim down, this all being stitched by hand. I am a little more than halfway done. So 
so you can see I still need to stitch down the other side here but I'm actually going to go edit the bulk of this video right now and see if I have time to maybe put this on tonight I would love to put it on for you guys and that would also allow me to mark the hem down here and just mark the stomacher because I want to try everything on with the stomacher before I actually put the bars on the stomacher and before I attach the stomacher onto this side since this side it's going to actually be sewn in place. Sorry friends, but it is late. I have just finished editing the rest of the video here and I just do not have the energy to have to put on stays to be able to put on the rest of the outfit. So instead, I am going to stop this video here and I'm probably going to go hand sew the rest of the trim on and then go to bed. So in the thumbnail, you may very well be seeing what the outfit looks like now with the trim done because I will probably take those thumbnail pictures tomorrow when I try all of that on. However, tomorrow is another week and therefore another vlog. So you will have to come back next week to actually see me put it on and then to see more of this project. This is definitely a slow going project because of my work and rehearsal schedule right now. But I'm hoping that maybe I can get a little bit more done next week. My goal would be to get the sleeves done for sure, to finish up like the closures and the decorations on the stomacher and stuff like that. So that is all done. And to get the hems done of both the petticoat and the gown itself. And then ideally to do like the ruffle on the skirt would be great too. That will still leave apron fichu. I don't know, is there anything else that I need for this? But it will probably leave one additional video basically until the project is done, done. But hopefully I can get a good crack out of stuff next week, especially as we get near to the opening of the show in April. It opens on April 14th because it's Titanic and that is both somehow very appropriate and also very inappropriate to open the show on the day that the Titanic hit the iceberg. But anyway, if you're interested in coming to Titanic the Musical and you live in the area, I will have the ticket info linked down in the description below. But that is going to be it for me for today. So hopefully you are enjoying this project so far and enjoying the video. If you liked this video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube at least once a week with my sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and sometimes additional content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram, so please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this channel, I do have linked my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below, or you can send me a super thanks right here on YouTube. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon, Mirage, Laura, and Jean. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!